All right, thank you all for coming. Uh, this is Tom Esten, and he is presenting Rise of the Autobots into the Underground of Social Network Bots. Uh, Tom is a penetration tester by day, and by night a social media security researcher, blogger, and co-host of the Security Justice Podcast. He likes long walks on the beach, <laughs> uh, breaking things, and getting accounts deleted from social networks. Enjoy. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Yeah, we'll get into that. <laughs> so hi, my name's Tom Eston. I'm not a bot, luckily. Um, I'm a, I guess you'd say, a uh, self-proclaimed social media security researcher. I don't actually think that's an actual title anywhere. Uh, I kind of just made that up because there really isn't too many people that do this kind of research. So that was kind of cool. By day, I'm a pen tester. Um, I'm also a bot lover, uh, contrary to what my wife thinks. But uh, I don't actually love bots. I just like playing with bots. Um, I also have a blog, spylogic.net. Uh, I co-host a podcast called Security Justice, and you can find me on Twitter as Agent0x0. First, a disclaimer and a big warning. Okay, what you're about to see here violates terms of service and uh, privacy policies of social networks. A lot of the stuff you're going to see is outright blatantly, uh, it will get your account deleted. Um, I have had accounts deleted doing some of this testing. Um, I also removed a lot on my own after I was done with the testing, even uh, though the social network didn't find out about them. Uh, just wanted to let you know that. Don't try us at home, uh, or don't try it with your real account, because it will be deleted. So social networks, I mean, everybody knows what these are. Uh, the hottest thing right now. A lot of people say this is the new hotness going on. Um, Great example about social networks. Um, a lot of people think that social networks are used by your generation, uh, generation Y, uh, generation X, like myself. Uh, but it's creeped into the uh, baby boomers and beyond. And as an example of that, my own mother over Easter weekend came up to me and said, "Tom, I've I've got this Facebook account. Can you help me set it up and and you know help me out with that?" And instant facepalm. I'm like, "No, no, no." <laughs> Go into the help section of Facebook, find out where you can delete the account, and click that button, and delete, I'm like anybody but my mother. So you'll be surprised. It's, it's amazing. So here's the granddaddy of them all, right? We got Facebook. This is, this is the biggest social network today. Recently just hit 200 million users. That's a lot of freaking people. This slide in itself pissed me off because I had to change it about three times since I started putting the uh, presentation together because they keep growing. We're talking about like they, 25 million just in the last three months they added to this number. They're huge. MySpace, we all know what this is. I consider this the cesspool of the internet, but it's still being used quite prolifically by 110 million users. It's a lot of people. LinkedIn, poor LinkedIn, right? They're kind of, you know, this emerging business social network. A lot of people put resumes, uh, connect with other people. It's great for corporate espionage. Uh, from a pen testing standpoint, uh, 35 million users. Uh, you know, very, very small compared to the other guys, but they are growing. Now, here's my favorite one, Twitter. This is the hottest social network right now. Um, recently, you may have heard Oprah started doing a contest with Ashton Kutcher to find out who can get the most, social, uh, the most friends on Twitter. And Ashton Kutcher won with, uh, it was like a million friends or something. Uh, once, it, once something reaches Oprah, it's kind of game over. You're mainstream now. So um, Twitter actually grew by 752% in 2008 alone. That's just crazy. That's crazy, these numbers. They had 8 million visitors just in March of this year. So, and they're just going to keep getting bigger. So, interesting quote here. Um, social networks are now ahead of email in terms of uh, the most popular online activity. Uh, ahead of email. And, and that's kind of my point is that since it's ahead of email now, that's kind of where spammers and other bad guys are going to start moving their attacks towards the social network. So, you're going to see a decrease in spam and you're going to see an increase in attacks on social networks. So it truly is a target-rich environment. So I want to talk a little bit about the culture of trust and how social networks actually work. Trust is important because you know, they want you to trust everybody. 
Uh, they're built on this uh, model of, you know, you're my friends, you're my family, we trust each other, so we're going to share a lot of information. A lot of people like sharing information with just the whole entire world. Uh, it, it's truly amazing. Uh, the whole point of this, um, and a lot of social networks don't have a really good business model or a way to make money, so they want you and they encourage sharing as much data about yourself as, as possible because what they are doing in the background is they are mining your data. A lot of people don't think about that, but if you read through their terms of service and privacy policies, they really are mining that data. And in some instances, like Facebook, for example, does sell like demographic information and kind of high level information about your profile to third parties. Um, recently, you may have remembered uh, Facebook got in a little bit of trouble when they said, uh, you know, hey, we own your data forever, even after you delete your account. And there was this huge uproar, and people were like, no, you can't do that. I'm deleting my Facebook account. And, you're, and I'm like, well, deleting your account doesn't matter because they own your data anyway. And, you know, you, whatever you post is their information. So it's something to keep in mind. So why would bots want to exploit trust? This is crazy, right? Uh, we're going to play a little game here. Um, we're going we're to play bot or not. You remember the hot or not, right? Uh, pretty popular with college kids. You know, look at the hot chick. Is she hot? Is she not? Uh, that kind of stuff. But we're going to play our own little game right here. OK, we have Jennifer here. Jennifer is you know, a good-looking blonde. She's got a pretty active profile, got a bunch of friends. Who wouldn't think she's a bot, right? She's a bot. How about Tommy here? Tommy is a good-looking college guy, you know, has some profile activity, um, looks like he's part of a college network, doesn't look anything suspicious, right? That's a bot. Tommy is interesting in particular because when you're a bot on a social network, you start getting in some weird replies from people. Uh, like Sarah here, she says, um, this is a message I got uh, in my Facebook inbox from Sarah. I feel like I'm being an ass, even asking if I know you or should know you after accepting your friend request. I feel like I should have maybe done the asking prior to that. So do I or should I know you? You seem to be friends with people I went to school with, but I don't recognize you. Well, it's interesting, Sarah, because she, sent, she confirmed me as a friend at 820 and at noon sent me this message. Well, it must be because she has 768 friends that she all knows directly, so I say fail. How about uh, OEPB4A, Kristen from Virginia. Um, she likes meeting new people, surfing the web, and she's going to sell you a free lap toe. <laughs> <laughs> Bot. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> but people fall for it. Haley. Uh, Haley, you know, she's got a profile that borders line on MySpace, but uh, on Facebook, it's kind of crappy, lots of hearts, lots of pretty things. She is actually not a bot, and she has 4,974 friends. Do you think she knows all 4,974 of those people? No. There's lots of fail here. <laughs> lots of fail in this profile. <laughs> Now let's take it, take it up a little level, all right? Uh, Rick Astley, come on. Rick Astley, can't be a bot. I mean, it's Rick Astley, right? Got a legitimate looking profile. He's from the UK. The site actually links back to his real site. Um, just looking at this, you're going to think, wow, that, that cannot be a bot. It's a bot. This was, uh, one of, this was a bot that I used. Uh, and it's interesting to see you're going to get a lot of interesting replies when you're a celebrity and you're impersonating a celebrity on Twitter with a bot. You know, no way this is the real Rick Astley. His website is far too crap. Uh, you know, people saying uh, they're going to get Rickrolled. You might get Rickrolled. Uh, afraid to claim his profile, probably an ad free porn site. Uh, you know, some guy saying his life is now affirmed because Governor Schwarzenegger and Rick Astley are following him. It's great. Uh, <laughs> Rick's going to blow up on your big time, Rick roll him, ha ha. And uh, the last one here, I love this one, uh, you know, my 80s heartthrob just found me and is following me. I followed him back. Love in bunches. We love you too. So could this have been the biggest Rick roll in history on Twitter? 
It absolutely could have been, and that was my plan. I was going to get as many followers I, as I could, and I was going to just rickroll all of them through a tiny URL. They would have never known the difference. Well, I stopped because I, all of a sudden one day I just looked at my follower list, and this was up for a couple days. I saw 666 followers. I think I'm going to stop there. That's a bad sign. Stop at 666. <laughs> yeah. So what's the point? Well, trust is extremely easy to exploit. People trust bots. They trust anything on social networks. Uh, that was just the tip of the iceberg, but as an example of some things. But it's scary to think that people do just trust just about anything. Uh, if you say you're a celebrity, they believe you. Um, accounts were created um, with these tools, some of the tools and the scripts that we're going to talk about in this presentation. Um, and then lastly, Rick Astley is just evil. But my opinion, nothing against Rick, but I just think he's evil. So let's get into the rise of the bots. First, a definition, what are bots uh, in terms of social networks? They're just like any other automated script or program that's out there. Um, they provide repetition. They provide repetition at uh, you know, much higher than what humans can do. Um, and they're, they're set up for scheduling and automation. And they're just great for doing all kinds of things. So you ever see this on social networks? You know, uh, spam links, uh, pictures of hot chicks with links to you know spam, uh, advertising in China. I mean, the list goes on. There's just you know spam, 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 spam all over social networks. Well, those things were all created by bots. A human isn't going to just sit there and start typing in spam links in social networks. You got to automate the process. Um, spammers use volume as their means of advertising. And we'll get into how much volume that we're talking about here. It really is automation on a mass scale, uh, because there's multiple ways that you can uh, do this. Uh, malware, uh, black hat SEO techniques, which we'll talk about in a little bit, uh, phishing, uh, propagate porn sites. Um, I found that it's interesting with spammers is it's all revenue generated. So even with the malware, um, when, the when you click on a link and it takes you to a like antivirus 2009 installation, uh, a lot of the times those are actually clicks to um, affiliate ads and to ad click sites to uh, help the spammer make money while doing this. And we'll talk about why these are so highly effective. So the bot underground. Truly, it is the spammer's choice. Lots of spam out there. I want to quickly talk about the underground business model, because it's important to understand how spammers work, how uh, bad guys um, make money uh, using bots. So there's three main methods. There's create and sell accounts. There is buy and use accounts. And then the last thing that I see a lot of is these custom bot scripts and software, which uh, gets into the freelancing uh, aspect, which we'll talk about here. Black Hat SEO. Um, this, this is an important thing to mention, because I find that uh, many of the sites that I've gone to that are talking about bots and uh, trying to sell you bot software and things like that are under this guise of Black Hat SEO. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, SEO is search engine optimization. And Black Hat SEO is just basically using uh, borderline evil techniques to uh, increase the search rankings of certain links, uh, like on Google, for instance. Something really bad recently happened to Ford that you may have remembered uh, seeing, where if you Googled for a, uh, a fan belt for my uh, Ford 1988 Ford Taurus, um, one of the first couple links that show up on Google was a malicious link to a, uh, an ad site. So uh, the, thir the three things that I see the most, though, with Black Hat SEO in terms of social networks is pay-per-click, paper install, and an interesting technique that not a lot of people know about called cookie stuffing. Sounds cool. That sounds like it's a, a recipe or something. Exactly. Stuff yep. Stuffing Oreos or stuffing cookies. Um, this is where a, uh, a black hat will uh, use some scripts and some techniques to maliciously insert um, affiliate links into your cookies. So say you go to Amazon and you're going to buy a product from Amazon, that spammer is going to get credit for, um, for that product purchase. So they, this is a very popular technique, and they've been doing this for a while. 
So you want to know more about Black Hat SEO? I could probably spend a whole presentation on Black Hat SEO. Actually, somebody did. Uh, Jeremiah Grossman, who's a fantastic uh, web security researcher, uh, spoke at Black Hat DC uh, about a couple months ago. Uh, had a whole presentation on uh, Black Hat SEO. And he even mentioned this guy here. This is uh, Shoe Money. You can Google for him. Um, this is a check that he has for 100 and almost $133,000 from Google. That is a real check. This is after using uh, some, he says they weren't black hat techniques, but they were black hat techniques before Google changed their algorithms they used in their AdSense and AdWords campaigns. Um, that's only after a couple months of work. Um, so there is major, major money to be made using te these techniques. And then I mentioned here two sites. Uh, Black Hat World um, is a forum, big forum that uh, a lot of people use to buy and sell trade, or buy and sell and trade bots and bot software, uh, freelancing, it's all out there. There's also some blogs like SEO Black Hat that provide a ton of information, almost too much information on how this whole underground works. So, what's for sale? What have I found? Um, hacked accounts, obviously. Guys that want to unload hacked accounts that they get from phishing or from malware campaigns or, or pretty much anything. Hacked accounts with friends are way more money. And, and that's important from a trust, a trust standpoint because the more friends you have, that means that there's a lot more people that trust you and there's more people that trust they, that you are who you say you are. And from a spammer perspective, that's fantastic because if I send out a tiny URL, to you know, 500 friends um, as you, they're going to click on that link. Uh, webmail accounts, um, I found the uh, verified webmail accounts. These are important for spammers because this is what they use when they create accounts of social networks. They need an email account most of the time to verify that it's who they, you know, that is a real, real legitimate account. And then the last two here, bot software and services, or bot software scripts, and, and then finally services which are quite interesting. So here's an example. I took on a persona of a guy interested in selling and wanting to purchase large quantities of Facebook accounts uh, and use CAPTCHA outsourcing services um, for my spamming uh, techniques. And I got back a reply. This guy says he can sell me 1,000 Facebook for $65 and 1,000 CAPTCHA uh, for 5 and $6. And we'll get into what he meant by CAPTCHA. He's not going to actually sell me CAPTCHAs. He's going to sell me services to break CAPTCHAs. So how much money is there to make out there with fake accounts and stolen accounts and things like that? Uh, a Facebook I found with 30 plus friends usually goes for about $8. It's not bad. Uh, Facebook phone verified. Um, so that means phone verified and Facebook. I don't know if, you, if you, any of you have a Facebook account. You can verify with your phone. And that way, that way you won't get that annoying CAPTCHA every time you send a message or a friend request to somebody else. Um, that's uh, basically to get around that. Those go for about five to six dollars. A thousand Gmail accounts go for thirteen. Great deal. Uh, Five hundred YouTube accounts uh, go for about thirty. Interesting fact: a lot of people don't realize that YouTube is a social network, but it truly is. So, there's controls in place for this stuff, right? I mean, the social networks wouldn't want, I mean, to just propagate bots throughout their networks. There's got to be something to stop all these bots and these spammers, right? CAPTCHA, right? We've tried CAPTCHA. We've tried in, you know, from Hotmail to Google to everybody else, um, they've tried CAPTCHA, but in almost every instance, it's always failed as a control. CAPTCHAs fail because the algorithms obviously can be cracked. Um, this has been proven with Hotmail and Yahoo and others. Um, there is something called OCR technology that can read CAPTCHAs and then will spit out the correct code for you. Um, CAPTCHA killer, they, they have hot chicks to advertise their services for you. So, um, you know, you can go to CAPTCHAkiller.com. Uh, this is basically like an API, and you can connect into it, and it'll crack the CAPTCHA for, it, for you and then send it back to you. Um, they say it's only supposed to be used for the blind and the visually impaired, but we know better. So if that doesn't work, right? Outsource it, right? Who needs a freaking computer? Just you got a ton of people in India right now that'll do it for you on the cheap. And I'm talking really cheap. There's a company called Outsource Bot. They even advertise it that they are a outsourcing bot service for you. Um, and it's pretty affordable when you think about it from the, the spammer's perspective. You know, $10 per 500, $75 for 5,000. 
Um, they will even set up a VPN for you back to your data center or your PC, crack the captures for you through a nice, you know, through your nice GUI, uh, you know, web interface through remote desktop, uh, and do all that for you. It's actually it's a huge, huge business. This outsourcing service. Or just use Melissa, right? You know, use a hot chick to crack the, uh, to crack the captures for you. Uh, this was an actually a piece of malware that went around last year um, that you would get this pop-up on your PC, and you know, you get this beautiful girl here, and she says, "Oh, here, start by you know uh, putting in these letters, you know, and hit enter. I'll remove a piece of clothing, and then you keep going and going and going." But guess what? What this is doing is this is sending the crack, the crack captures back to the spammer to create email accounts, to send Facebook messages, to do all that. So you got people to automate it for you just by using a technique like this. Absolutely amazing. Guys will fall for anything. Man. <laughs> I wanted to know if you could switch that and put a good looking guy, you know, and just, nah, it wouldn't work. <laughs> So what about uh, these friend requests and messaging controls? This is where um, I talked about like Facebook having the phone verification. Um, so you know when you're sending messages and, and stuff like that to your friends that they um, you're not a spammer and the, and the account wasn't taken over by a spammer. Uh, so they've got this great thing called phone SMS verification. Um, it really is a great idea. You think about it, you know, because everybody has a cell phone. So what they'll do is they'll you know, you'll put in your cell phone number. Facebook will send you a text message with a verification code. Put that code in, and the account gets verified. Well, it can be broken. Um, broken, obviously, with prepaid cell phones. That's an easy one. Um, they say, and I, I don't know how I got it to work, but I tested this. I bought one of those track phones that was like ten dollars to test this out, and. I was actually able to uh, get four or five accounts uh, confirmed with one number. And then all of a sudden, it just stopped working. So that was kind of strange. And I don't think it's supposed to work that way, but uh, interesting experiment nonetheless. Uh, there's things called overseas uh, virtual SMS services, which provide SMS receive. There's actually some, so there's services that will um, you know, provide this service, and you can, they'll give you a bunch of these fake numbers, basically like voice over IP numbers, and allow you to receive SMS messages. And then another thing I tried too was uh, SMS back to either ICQ or Yahoo Messenger. Um, you're actually using the, uh, if you go into like Yahoo Messenger and set up like uh, cell phone verifications or cell phone messages where people can text you through your account, um, I found that I can actually get that verification code back from Yahoo Messenger. So what about rate limits, right? Um, they've got to have these rate limits, throttling limits, so you're not sending a million messages to Facebook or a million friend requests and things like that. Um, this is really easy to bypass because all you do is throttle below the limits that they set. Just test it with a couple accounts like I did. Um, apparently with Facebook, um, you can only send about 100 messages per hour. Um, without getting this little pop-up here, it says you're approaching the limit for sending messages. And then this one here, um, this was actually doing some other crazy activity with the account with one of these bots. I got this message that uh, your account could be disabled. So uh, easy to bypass, just find out what the limits are and then just throttle your, your messaging below that level and you're fine. So let's get into the types of bots that we find on social networks. Three categories, really. There's, there's good bots, which are your typical Twitter bots. These are things that um, I look at it like IRC. You know how IRC has bots. And if you're in an IRC chat room, you can just you know, type to the Google bot, and he'll send you some random phrase of gibberish. And that's kind of fun. It's, not, it's kind of cool. Or a forecast bot here, where they'll, uh, you can send your zip code, and it'll send you the current weather for your zip code. Housewatch is neat. Um, if you want to look at home prices, um, in your area, you can send it your uh, location and your zip code. It'll send you uh, prices for phone or for for uh, homes and stuff. Remember the milk. Um, this is where you can actually set up automated tasks. Like say you have a big to-do list, you can have Twitter actually uh, tweet you uh, your reminders and your tasks. Uh, why people would want to put personal tasks up on a social network is beyond me, but people do it. It's a very popular service. Not about. Uh, Not about is my creation. Um, this is, uh, you can find them out there on Twitter. You've probably seen them twittering away uh, like, a, like a mad little robot. 
Um, he just tweets mindless things. Um, he likes to reply to you, and of course his replies are total garbage at times, but uh, that's kind of how he's designed. Um, that's kind of why I use the loss in space robot, kind of this, you know, out of control little thing. Um, he does like Nauticon, and he is mostly harmless. So annoying bots. Uh, this is a great uh, cartoon I found out there about uh, the Twitter bots. Um, how, you know, everybody wants to follow me back, follow me back, and, you know, beep, work, click, 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 click. Everybody's a robot following you. Um, this is where we get into, you know, these services like Social2, Tweet Later, Twitter Feed. Um, these are things that spammers, especially on Twitter, are using to really take advantage of, of their accounts out there. So Social2 is a great example is when uh, you set up an account and people start uh, friending you. Well, what Social2 will do is it'll automatically follow them back. It'll also send them a nice direct message saying, hey, thanks for following me. And if you're on Twitter, you've probably seen those. They're, uh, they're pretty annoying, actually. And uh, Social2 actually turned off the direct message feature because they had a lot of complaints from people. Um, but bots are using that to increase their, um, their follow back count, which is actually pretty neat. Um, and there's also bots that look for keywords, too, in your tweets. So um, say I'm tweeting about uh, security or security product or food. Foodimentary is a perfect one. You type anything, anything about, I had a, ba a cream cheese bagel for breakfast, and all of a sudden, foodimentary is following me. I'm like, that's weird. But then I thought about it, and there's services out there that actually go out there and look for all those keywords in the Twitter search and then automatically follow you. So let's get into the good stuff, the evil bots. These are the ones that are taking over the social networks. These are really cool. This guy here, Ubot, um, this is a, f by the way, all these, these are all free programs that you can go and download and uh, take a look at the code and everything in some instances. But this guy is a nice uh, Windows GUI program created in .NET. It's buggy as hell. It crashes all the time. But you know what? I got this thing to work fairly well. Um, for quite a while uh, with really no issues. So here's a, a Facebook account creator script that uh, somebody posted in one of their forums. Uh, I copied it and used it myself to test it out, and it worked great. Um, so here's, here's just an example of like Ubot in action. So what it does is you've got your GUI screen. Um, you've got the script that's running in this left window, and then you can change all these scripts to do whatever you want. Basically, what this does is it scrapes the page. So um, say it's like on Facebook. Um, you do a search for, um, you can actually search for random people in Facebook. So you bring up that page. And what it does is it scrapes all the Facebook ID numbers off the page, puts it into the script, and it starts running through, you know, add as a friend, add as a friend, add as a friend, pops up the CAPTCHA. Um, these are nice because you can integrate the API from like CAPTCHA Killer into it, so it goes out to Captcha Killer, cracks the, the uh, Captcha, then comes back, and then sends the friend request, or finishes the friend request for you. Um, outsourcing services use this exact same technique to create that VPN back to you, or you can actually shoot the Captchas out to the outsourcing service, and then encrypt the Captcha for you, and then it comes back. Web Dominator, this is my favorite one. You know, they've got this awesome page, Dominate the Web, Industrial Strength Program. You know, they, they use all these awesome words to, uh, you know, basically say you can just take over the entire internet with this program. <laughs> kind of funny. Um, here's Web Dominator in action. It works a lot like Ubot, but I found it a lot more reliable and actually coded a lot better with way more features uh, that I could ever possibly imagine. Um, you can schedule this stuff, so you can, uh, you, you know, in Windows, it'll link into the scheduling service and schedule these tasks for you. Um, you can automate uh, sending any kind of messaging you want on these social networks. They have plugins for MySpace, Facebook, LinkedIn. They've got even some of the obscure ones like High Five and stuff that nobody uses. They've got tons of these plugins for this. Um, so you can see here in the information list, this is where it's scraping the page. Uh, with the Facebook user IDs. Um, it's providing uh, quick actions here and things like that. So Web Dominator also has a nice little uh, feature where you can go to YouTube and they have instructional videos on how to use the bot, just in case you didn't know how to figure it out yourself, which was great. So um, and he says here, the bot for any social network. 
Other pay services. Um, I mentioned that those were all free. Um, there's more than just that. Um, there's a lot of lower level ones. I just wanted to kind of show you the high level ones. Um, but these other pay services, there's FriendBot, Add New Friends. Um, there's lots of other services that you pay anything from $50 all the way up. You can get code um, that works out of the box with support too, which is even better because support is important, you know. Uh, the last real uh, evil bot I wanted to mention is Realboy. Uh, Realboy is, it, it was a university project that was done by some uh, college students. I don't know if it was their thesis or something like that, but um, their goal was to make Twitter uh, bots as human as possible. Um, a little scary when you think about it, and I, lo I looked at their code, and, and basically what it's designed to do is to interact with the people that you interact with by doing things like retweeting, um, sending uh, phrases and words out that look like real statements and things like that. Um, and it's downright scary that you could actually create something on a social network that interacts real time with people in your network. Uh, the source code is available for this. You could just Google it and, and you can find it yourself. Um, but it, this is kind of the, this is like the beginning of the evolution of, of kind of like these Twitter bots. And this just came out, I think, last year. So. Yeah. Yep, exactly. It uses a back end uh, MySQL database uh, to kind of harvest all your friends' uh, data, and then it'll go out and kind of categorize that, um, retweet certain things, so it looks like a real person. So social network botnets, right? Um, this is a, a possibility that's uh, probably coming down the road. Um, we've already seen some of this stuff already, right? We've seen uh, the Kubeface worm in Facebook and MySpace that's already um, you know, basically used for malware distribution, for command and control. Uh, DD, uh, d distributed denial of service botnet through uh, third-party Facebook applications. Uh, there were some researchers that did uh, something called Facebot, um, and there's a great paper on this. Basically, Facebot is a third-party application you install through Facebook, um, kind of like you know the, the the poker and snowball, throw a snowball at your friend application. All these all these junky apps that are out there on Facebook. Um, but Facebook, what it'll do, or Facebot, what it'll do is it will basically, if once everybody has this application installed, at the same time it'll create a uh, mass denial service to a website. Um, because you think about all the apps that are installed on Facebook and you just need one malicious application out there installed by everybody and that developer takes control of that and then creates this massive denial service. Scary stuff and it can happen. Uh, last thing here, control a botnet via Twitter. Um, this is what, uh, this is the code that we're releasing at Nauticon this weekend. Um, Digit Ninja, who is Robin Wood, you may know Robin uh, as a guy who created uh, Yasiger, which Yasiger is uh, karma on the phone. So if you're in penetration testing or if you watch Hack 5, you probably know what that is. Uh, Robin's a great guy. He's an excellent uh, Ruby coder, and he put together some proof of concept code um, that basically acts as a command and control, um, replacing essentially what IRC is for uh, bot herders on botnets. So you can get this code actually right now from Robin's site. Here's an example of how it works. It's really two programs. The first program here on the left is the um, actual command and control code. So it will send a command. In this example, I use just a simple uh, ping command uh, to a Twitter account, which the tw Twitter account was evilbot. In a more malicious attempt, you could send an actual netcat uh, shell to that command. So, you, so as the attacker, I would get a shell back from the, uh, the uh, system that had the code on, the other code that we'll talk about here in this other screen. So this other code, what it does is it sits there and it waits. It's every 20 seconds, it queries this Twitter account for any kind of command from it, and it'll run it on the system. So here you can see it ran the ping command on this other system. Uh, while it was uh, searching for it. So things to come with Twitter bots. Um, obviously, the, the big thing is to obfuscate those commands somehow, either make them look like legitimate uh, Twitter traffic, because if Twitter saw a bunch of, you know, these, you know, uh, netcat listeners and all kinds of stuff going up on Twitter, they would probably flag that as spam and categorize it. Well, you can obfuscate that either through a hash 
or through uh, some kind of encryption um, or actually putting it into like tiny URLs or things like that. There's a lot to do there. Um, and Robin's going to be working on some newer versions uh, to hopefully do that. Um, and then get the bot to talk back. Obviously, that's important as well. And so there's the link to the site. You can pull down the code, uh, diginninja.org slash Twitterbot. So is the end near? I mean, are, are, are bots really just all going to take over social networks and then we're left with nothing? Uh, there'll be no more, prof no more legitimate profiles and people are just going to stop using social networks and that's going to suck, right? Skynet's a bot. Skynet's a bot, right. <laughs> well, there are some things and some developers are starting to do a lot of stuff now. Uh, this one is interesting. This is a, a Twitter program called, uh, or a, well, I guess I call it a service. It's called It's a Bot. And what they do is they have some algorithms that go out and uh, look for, you know, unique characteristics of what, what bots would be. Uh, and it's an API. So if you have a service on Twitter, you could actually, or Twitter itself could actually connect into It's a Bots API and look for known bots and then eliminating them out of the system. Um, there are lots of clues. Obviously, we've seen them in my examples. Um, like Kristen, you know, just look at the profile, that's a bot, you know, block it. Um, and again, like, like uh, it's a bot, there's more stuff that I'm sure that's in development to kind of help to de de detect bots on social networks. Other possible solutions, you know, better account creation, message throttling. Um, you know, I'm still amazed that it takes, you know, up to 100 times for, you, on, like on Facebook, to get this warning that you're doing something bad. Um, why can't they limit that down or change the algorithm or the way that they calculate that? Um, this amazes me. Why, do you, why can you still create hundreds of accounts from the same IP? I mean, even if it's, you know, like going through Tor or whatever, it just kind of, uh, I just wonder why they allow you to do that because a real legitimate person really only needs to create maybe one or two accounts at times. So uh, hopefully they can limit that. Um, Opt-in developer models, so for Facebook, so those applications like I talk about for the uh, the Facebook or the Facebot, um, the developer models are really opt-in. Um, Facebook has a program where you could pay like $300 and they will uh, verify you as, as an official developer. Um, I don't think they actually look at your code, but you kind of get this seal of approval from Facebook. I, I just think that's not enough. I think they need to do a lot more than that. Um, and it shouldn't be opt-in because a lot of this code going into these social networks, all based on this open social model, um, a lot of time is programmed by people that should not be programming or coded very insecurely. Um, education of users, right? Somebody's got to do it because the social, the social networks absolutely will not educate users because it's not in their business model, right? They, like I said earlier, they want you to share as much information as possible and by educating them, well, now everybody's going to start holding back and pulling information back, and that's not what they want. So somebody, you know, like, like, like myself or in the security community has to come out, or colleges have to start doing more education of users and really get the word out about how to safely use social networks. So there's more. Um, socialnetworkbots.com. This is a new open source project that I just started. Um, to kind of uh, gather and collaborate on different kinds of social network bots written, uh, right now written in Ruby and in Python, just to demonstrate the different kinds of things that you can, you can do with bots for non-malicious purposes, of course. Um, but I put the Notabot code up there. Um, Notabot is very basic, written in Python, uh, nothing, nothing crazy. Um, like I said, I'm not a programmer, but um, just putting it together was fairly simple. Um, you can actually use it on, on an account on Twitter if you want to and play around with it. Um, and again, the Twitter bot command and control uh, code is available from Robin Wood's site at digininja.org. So do I have any questions? Yes. It would be launched from their, their machine, the client's machine. Um, in terms of the face, the, you're talking about the Facebook bot, or the, the face bot? Yeah, the application. The users will install the application uh, through Facebook, but the actual, uh, 
commands to send to whatever website the developer has programmed to do the denial service, that would all be done on their machine. Yep. Yes, sir. propagate to other social networks? That's, that's an interesting subject. Um, anyone that doesn't know what Facebook Connect is, is uh, it's kind of like Facebook's third party integration service with other websites. So say you're on fox.com and um, you know where you've seen those links where it says send to my Facebook profile and, and things like that or send to my Twitter account. Well with Facebook Connect it'll actually allow you to um, log into your Facebook account from fox.com and then automatically post things uh, to that. Um, I haven't seen a lot of attacks centered around that because I know Facebook account was just released I think last year and it kind of went mainstream then and there's, it's just starting to get integrated with a lot more sites. One interesting thing I did find um, was there was, where I work at, there was a news organization that we were, um, they were trying to, uh, you would go to the main page and the coder had improperly uh, coded the Facebook Connect API that linked back to Facebook and it was basically uh, causing like a, um, the page to continuously refresh and just all kinds of weird stuff. So um, definitely it's gonna be manipulated, I think in the future for sure. Anybody else? Yes? Could you go over like a quick pseudocode for um, writing like a simple bot in Twitter? Is it, is it just involved like screen scraping and posting or is there some sort of API? Yeah, you know, um, it, interesting you say that. Um, there's a great uh, library in Python. It's called um, Python Twitter or Twitter Python, yeah. Python Twitter, right, exactly. Python Twitter is great. Um, everything is done for you. Um, it's basically just uh, going out to, the, to this, this library um, with a, a couple requests and um, they've, they've laid out some great processes that you just connect into. Um, the library does all the work for you and then brings back the data back into your code. It's very simple. Um, yes, there is one for Ruby because I know Robin Wood uses that for Ruby and I'm, I'm sure there's probably others as well. Yeah, yeah. Yep. There's some Twitter clients for Linux that are written that way. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm available. Uh, I'll be here the rest of the con if anybody else has any questions, but uh, thanks for coming. <laughs>